Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. Actually, I guess it would be last week's live chat. If you're wondering why I'm coming to you on a Monday, it's because I was out of town last week for spring break and decided to move it to this Monday. But we are gonna have another live chat on Thursday. So no live chats last week to this week. So I don't know if that's a good thing for you or not, but I'm looking forward to talking to you today about the newest free motion challenge, Quilting Along. So I have got on the chat earlier. I've got some questions that people were asking. I'm gonna address those. I've got a giveaway to tell you about and also some more live chats. I'll let you know what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're gonna have a lot of fun. But this chat is a little different than most. So I'm gonna be introducing you to the next free motion challenge, Quilting Along. And just a brief note about the quilting along. If you've never participated, let me tell you a little bit about what it is. So the free motion challenge quilting along is basically a video series where we work together on a design or a technique machine quilting related, of course. And we go through the videos and we work on this project or work on our, our uh, designs. And the main idea is when it comes to machine quilting, you have to practice. I know, I know, it's not a fun thing to say, it's not the most popular tip, but you do have to practice. But our brains will do difficult stuff if we can do it with other people. Um, I'm not sure where I read that, but I did read that somewhere. So the idea is that we can all practice together and cheer each other on and have fun learning a new technique. Now I'm gonna go over some frequently asked questions about the challenge, I'll tell you what the next one is about, but just know that it's free to participate and it's a lot of fun. So if you haven't joined one before, you should definitely uh, join on this one. Plus the good thing is the videos stay on my YouTube channel indefinitely. So you can go back and work through some of the previous challenges if you want, or if you're not quite ready to work on this one, you're like, I'm not in a good place, I'm busy, life keeps getting in the way, no worries. You can still join the live chats, watch the videos, and then you can participate when you have a chance. It is a lot more fun to do it live though because then you can kind of um, work through and ask the questions while we're here. But anyway, it's gonna be a great, great time. So I actually started the free motion challenge quilting alongs. Oh, it's probably been a few years ago now and this is gonna be my 10th challenge. It seems crazy to think about it. Um, most of the challenges were full video series. One of them was a, a shorter one, but we're just gonna say this is the 10th one. And really from the very beginning, we just started with basic designs and we've kind of built off of that. And about three challenges ago, four challenges ago, I started designing custom panels just for the challenge. So we're gonna talk about that, but just know that you don't have to have the panel. You can definitely participate in any way that you want. But let's go to a little show and tell so I can tell you about the next challenge. Um, I'm so excited to finally be at this point because to get to here, there's a lot of work and a lot of effort on my team. They were up cutting last weekend, and so definitely uh, the culmination of a lot of hard work, so I'm excited to share it to you, share it with you. First, I'll just show you real quick. These are the panels from the three previous challenges. So the idea is if you want to quilt along with me on the same project, you can purchase this panel. You don't have to, but they're designed exclusively by me for the challenge. So. Definitely a fun way. Um, the first one on the left is the help, how do I quilt it, where we learn different block designs. Uh, the one in the middle was the last challenge, the machine quilting with rulers. And the third one is echoes and curves, where we did serpentine lines. The thing about um, designing panels, just a little side note, is I try to make them look as quilty and as interesting as I can, but I still need those spaces to fill in with different designs, right? It still needs to be a teaching tool. And so with this next challenge, it's gonna look completely different. Some of you already know what it looks like because you saw the sneak peek on my last live chat, but hopefully you will, um, you'll kind of love it. So this is the first one. Um, the next challenge is gonna be called Flora and Foliage. So each challenge has some kind of theme, right? So we've done feathers, we've done swirls, how to quilt blocks. This one is loosely based off nature inspired quilting designs. The main idea being let's learn some fun fillers, some great designs to add texture that maybe have a nature inspiration to it. Now, this doesn't mean they have to be used on, you know, nature quilts or landscape quilts. It's just a rough grouping or just a kind of a way that I kind of categorized it. So really fun. Now let's talk about the panel first of all. So this is the panel that I'll be or, uh, demoing the designs on, and this is the flora and foliage panel. Um, it's about 42 by 50, so it's a great size for those of you that are newer to machine quilting that don't want to quilt a very large quilt or don't want to have to wrestle it. And that size is perfect for a baby quilt or a wall hanging. And the inspiration for this was very much spring is coming, 
Um, Mother's Day is coming. It's a great idea for Mother's Day, either you know, giving it to your mom or getting your kids to buy the kit for you, however that works out for you. But just this idea that we're kind of coming on a new, this is gonna sound cheesy, but a new like rebirth. It was this time last year that I found out my kids were not going back to school. A little bit shocking and we all know what happened throughout the next year, but this is the hope that's coming. Anyway, so this is a challenge uh, panel that we'll be working with. Now what's fun about this is it has plenty of open spaces, but it does make this really cool abstract pictorial design. And this is a little bit closer up. Now it's really tricky to show you the colors. Red is such a hard color to show on monitors. I was very hesitant to use it, but needed to because it just needed to pop off the center. So think of like raspberries and magentas and, and blush, I mean really, really beautiful saturated colors with the teals and the emeralds in the background. And of course we have the light pink and the gray in the background. So it's gonna make a stunning quilt. Um, it's really gonna show off our, our quilting uh, things there. Now, part of the challenge, I have also designed coordinating backing. So you can either quilt on any quilt sandwich you have laying around, an unfinished quilt you have, basically just whatever you will quilt on, start quilting. But if you want to quilt along, you can get the panel. And if you want the coordinating prints, I have this is the next print, or this is the backing for the panel. So this is a bright, pretty floral soft print. It's going to make the best binding because when you fold it over, it just get a little hint of those petals and it pulls out some of those colors from the front. Um, I always want to put colors on the front or prints on the panel, but it's tricky because you won't be able to see the quilting. And I want you to be able to see what you're doing. So opting for a nice print on the back always gives me a good option. So this is an option that you can purchase the backing and this would be the binding. Now the last challenge or two challenges ago, I started adding an optional border panel. So I feel like most quilters can be put into two categories, right? People that love borders and people that don't. And I do a block of the month called build a quilt and I have learned through that that a lot of quilters like borders. So if you wanna add some borders to your panel, you can definitely do that, it's up to you. Again, it's optional. And these are designed to be quick and easy to sew on. So this is the pieced border and this is what it looks like with the panel. Um, I love the look of flying geese. I don't love taking the time to piece all that. So this is going to make it look like you spent forever making that border without actually doing that. And as a bonus, you see those little star blocks in the corners and on the sides, you'll get some extra of those in the panel. When I designed the prints, I had just a little bit extra room. So I threw some extra blocks in there for you to use on a future project. So you can definitely check that out. Now, if you're interested in any of that, you can check out the link in the description box. It takes you to everything you're gonna hear about the challenge, the products, the schedule, the samples, all that kind of thing. Um, but again, it's free to participate. This is just if you wanna quilt along on the same project that I'm quilting on. I've also picked out some coordinating threads. This is something that you know, people had requested about you know, five challenges ago. It's really hard to pick thread colors, but it turns out that's one of my favorite things to do. So I've picked out a beautiful coordinating thread collection. Now, if you have joined any of my live chats, if you've watched any of my videos, you know about the love affair I have with Glide Thread. And so Glide is a 40 weight thread. It has just a bit of sheen and it looks beautiful with machine quilting. So I've picked out five colors that go perfectly with the panel. Of course, you don't have to have all those colors. You could use a light gray and look great on all of them. Or if you have colors laying around, you can use those as well. So this is just an option for those that, you know, need more thread or want more thread like me. So that's the coordinating thread. So let's learn though about the challenge itself. So we've seen the products, that's great. Let's learn the designs. So week one, right out the gate, we're gonna go to wood grain. Here's the thing about wood grain. It is such a beautiful texture. It looks great whether you use it as an all over, over the whole quilt, or when you use it in the background. And so we're gonna talk about how to quilt it. We're gonna talk about you know common mistakes that quilters make. But for those of you that have a little bit more quilting experience, you know, you're like, I've struggled through all this. I feel more comfortable. I want to be inspired with other designs. I'm gonna show you how to fit this design into irregularly shaped areas. So it was great because Gertie asked on the chat, she said, can I show how to fill in wood, use the wood grain to fill in irregularly shaped areas? And I said, yes, that is actually what we're gonna do. So what I tried to do with this challenge is pick designs and applications of those designs that no matter where you are on your quilting journey, you'll be successful with it. So if you are just starting out free motion quilting, you're like, I'm still trying to breathe and quilt at the same time, this is for you. 
for those of you that are thinking, I've done all nine other challenges, I'm ready, I feel excited, this is for you too, because we're gonna see different ways to apply them on your quilt. So really excited about that. So we'll talk about the wood grain design, we're gonna talk about getting smooth lines, echoing, but I'll also show you variations. I love design variations because you take something you already know, you switch it up a little bit, and then you have a new design. So we're gonna talk about adding pops of other filler in there to create just a slightly different effect and some other fun variations I can't wait to show you. Um, like this one right here. So wavy lines and some different arcs. So depending on the quilt you're working on, you're gonna be able to apply this design in a lot of different ways. It's gonna be awesome. All right, then week two, we're gonna go into the leafy meander. Now we have seen this before in the free motion challenge. We saw it um, the very first one, but we're gonna revisit it because we're gonna talk about how to be more intentional with the placement of the leaves. So we're gonna talk about in all over, we're gonna talk about making them go in a direction, and then we're gonna dibble dabble just a bit into thread painting, just a wee bit, just to, just to put it out there. So here we can see the leafy meander that we're gonna be, we're gonna be learning but also adding some more traveling to really make that negative space pop. And if you're thinking this is too much, don't worry. We're gonna start out basic and we're gonna move up with it. So it's gonna be fun. And then also how we can add different colors like I've done on this quilt, so much fun. Love adding tons of colors. But again, don't let this scare you. You don't have to take it quite as far as I did. Or even in the lighter teal color, kind of creating a different effect by making them go in one particular direction. It's, this is gonna be a really fun uh, design that starts out super basic and you can just go crazy with it. So here's another example of those leaves. So we'll be seeing all this. And as a side note, what's really gonna be great about this panel, put a lot of thought into this, we're gonna be learning how to fill in defined areas, right? Because it's one thing to know how to quilt a leafy meander, it's a completely different thing to know where to put it and how to fill in this defined bit. But here's a great thing. If you're newer to quilting and you're like, I don't know, this is too small, we're gonna talk about how you can combine shapes to make bigger areas. So we're definitely gonna make this like a choose your own free motion quilting adventure. So we'll be talking about that. Now I wanna show this picture, sorry it's blurry. I threw it in at the last minute, but I thought it was such a good example of that leafy meander on a totally extreme just quilting it so that it goes in a particular direction. So we can start really basic and really go crazy with it. All right, then week three, we're gonna go into the flower meander. So we're kind of sticking with, again, the nature inspired designs. And the flower meander is one of the most beginner friendly designs there is. Really the idea of this is as long as you keep quilting, it's gonna look great. So we're gonna talk about that basic flower meander you can see here. Then we're also gonna talk about adding some echoing to create a slightly different effect. Then we're gonna go into maybe some different variations. So maybe doing some wavy lines or creating different effects, a little bit easier variation maybe. And I have, I don't think I've done this in a free motion challenge, maybe early on, but I do have some tutorials on this, but I can't wait to go into a little bit more detail because the more I do these, the, the more I understand the questions you have. And I think you're gonna love watching this video. Then for those of you that are like, I've done your flower meander, I want something harder, give me a challenge. Well, you won't find it on this challenge. But this particular flower is a fun way to take serpentine lines and kind of create this different um, fun effect. So again, depending on where you are, you can start with the really basic man or basic flower or add some different effects. And here we can see a little bit more detail. So again, that thread just oh, popping off of that color looks so good. Then we'll talk about taking out that flower bit. So those little beautiful petals of scallops using it like an echoing. So in that red right in the center, I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'm using it as a way to echo another shape. And so we're gonna see how maybe if you're having trouble adding echo lines, that instead of do doing them straight, adding some scallops will give you the same effect with a little bit easier time. So it's gonna be fun. All right, then we're gonna move on to pebbles. And we have seen this before in this world's challenge, but we're gonna to touch base on some variations of the pebble design. So instead of trying to keep all those pebbles the same exact size, we're gonna experiment with different variations of sizes. And we're gonna talk about how to combine them with other shapes as well. So here is the center of the panel that we'll be working through. How to combine them with the flowers and the leaves and the pebbles, such a great textured effect. And it's just taking those basic designs that we've already learned and putting them together. And you can see them in the center of the panel right here. So again, a lot of uh, fun designs, and then we're going to move on. Ooh, sorry, yep, 
and a little bit more uh, detailed pictures of the quilting there. So the scallops kind of adding an echo line, different shaped pebbles, just really having fun taking these basic designs and creating, creating some really cool variations. But it's not even just the designs. It's, you know, it's also how to use them on a quilt. Where would you put this design? How would you apply it to this area? So we're really gonna dive into all that, especially we'll talk about how in a second, but it's gonna be really good. So just another pretty picture. I couldn't decide which one to keep, so I just kept them both. Again, shows you the beautiful colors of the panel and the designs we're gonna be learning. Then we're gonna move on to swirl chain. So the swirl chain we have also seen in the swirls challenge, but this one is gonna be a little bit different because we're going to talk about how to maneuver an area or maybe make them add movement to your quilt. So, okay, maybe swirls aren't exactly nature inspired. I was trying to think of a logical leap for this, um, but it's like wind or it's like movement. So this is gonna help you on your quilts draw attention to an area that you really wanna show off. And then another example of that swirl change, this is a slight variation, how you can use it to create those secondary effects on your quilts. So this is obviously not the challenge quilt, but a quilted sample that shows you how I love to use this design. So one of my favorite designs. And then we're also gonna talk about paisley feathers, and I couldn't find a picture quick enough to throw into this, so paisley feathers are one of my favorite designs. I like to say they're like a party trick. If you can do them, people are super impressed, but they're so easy and they're gonna build off that swirl chain design that we learned. So six weeks, a lot of different designs, but by the time you're done, you're gonna have a great toolkit of designs to put on your quilts. You're gonna be able to quilt all sorts of different things with these designs. So let's talk about the schedule, right? So it all starts April 7th, so coming up pretty quick. April 7th, the video will come out, and then each week, the video, each week a video will come out in the challenge, and that will be on my YouTube channel. So you wanna make sure that you subscribe so you get notifications, but you can also sign up for my email list because that's where I send out a little bit additional tips or reminders about the live chat. Now the live chats, which we have been doing for quite a while now, really started with the free motion challenge quilting along, and so it's gonna continue that way. So now that we're heading into a challenge, each week I'll be talking about the prior day's video. So um, April 7th, the wood grain design video comes out. The next day we'll talk about wood grain. I'll let you, you can ask me any questions you have about it. I can maybe go into a little bit more detail on something that I couldn't maybe fit in the video. And so it's gonna be a great way, an additional resource for the tutorials, just, just to make sure that you're successful with the designs that we're talking about. Because I know sometimes you don't, you don't know what you don't know until you do it. That's what the live chats are for. So I hope that you'll join us, for, join me for those. And so this is all gonna be on the website. It's already on the website. You just click the link in the description box below and it will show you all this. So this is when it starts and um, the, the schedule that we'll be following. Super excited about that. Now as, um, additional, as we, let me stop, as I go through the challenges, more and more requests get asked, and I try to ac um, accommodate those as much as possible. So there's gonna be some additional things. First of all, every challenge, every video has quilting diagrams, a free downloadable tip sheet for that particular design, so you can print it out and keep it next to you. But I'm also going to include um, design placement diagrams, thread placement diagrams, and also like where you're gonna quilt where. So this particular diagram will get sent out in the email and it's just gonna show you which week you're supposed to quilt where. Now, I gotta pause because I think that you should quilt whatever design you want, anywhere you want. But when I say that in a challenge or a, a live chat, people are like, oh, I don't know, I wanna do it like you did it. So I'll just walk you through it. I'll tell you what to put where if you want to follow along or if you're like, don't tell me what to do, I'll do what I want, then you can definitely do what you want. Um, I'll also include a thread diagram, uh, thread placement as well. So for those of you that do buy the panel and the coordinating thread collection and you're not sure where to put it, I'll have instructions on where to put those threads. So, or where I have put them. And then you can take that and either follow it or make your own variations of it, totally fine. And then every week I'll have a design placement diagram and that, that comes in the uh, quilting diagrams. It's like your weekly challenge, right? So here's your challenge, fill in the area highlighted in red with the designs we learned in this video. So again, it's just kind of a, a program to follow. It's just something to make you feel like, okay, I'm great, I'm, I'm following along and I, I'm progressing. So you can definitely do that as well. Now, for the first time, I've not done this before, but for the first time, I have designed a fabric collection that goes along with the panel. Now, during the videos, I'm always going to demonstrate on the panel that you saw, 
and that's how I'm going to do it. But some people want a bigger quilt. They want to give it away or they want to add to it. And this really started after seeing everybody's beautiful quilts. They'd take the panel and they'd add all sorts of stuff to it. And I thought, you know what? Let me help give you some coordinating prints and solids. And so this collection has kind of started as a, the jumping off point for a fabric collection. So here's the, here's the main idea. This is just fun. It just coordinates. You don't have to have it. And you don't have to use it with a panel. You can keep it separate. It's just um, a, an additional thing. So the coordinating prints, first of all, include a pillow panel. So this is about 22 inches by 42 inches. And those pretty little flower set, um, bundles right there are about 18 inches square. Here's the idea with this. So that's already had some questions like, what's up with the pillow panel? Should I buy it? It's a smaller practice piece. That's all it is. I'm trying to think of a lot of the common um, obstacles to trying machine quilting. And some of them are that it's just so big and it's so hard to maneuver it. So if you're newer and you're like, I just want to quilt something smaller, then you can get the pillow panel and, and quilt the design over the whole thing. Or you can incorporate it into a whole nother quilt. It's totally up to you. Um, but this is going to be a, a nice smaller option for those of you that don't want the bigger quilt. I will still be demonstrating on the regular panel. Just want to make that clear. But you can quilt on this if you want. Now, in addition to the pillow panel, there are some coordinating prints. So we've already seen the backing print. You can buy that um, by the yard. I have a three yard kit that goes to the panel, but if you just want a yard or two, you can buy that. And then I also have some coordinating prints. So first of all, this is a tonal print um, with some teals and some raspberry. This one right here is my favorite. I just love that pink and the color. Screen doesn't do it justice. It's just gorgeous. And then a gray, more kind of, um, lighter tonal bit of it. So there's going to be that one. And then there's going to be a wood grain design. So this wood grain comes in three colors. It comes in navy, light pink, and then like a, a magenta color, a deep, deep pink color. But when I designed this, I designed it so that you could quilt along the lines and practice the design. You don't have to, right? You can use it just because you think it's an amazing print. And if you don't think it's an amazing print, just don't tell me because I've already ordered a bunch of it. I don't want, I don't want any bad, bad vibes now. But if you are having trouble with the wood grain design and you're like, I just can't get the hang of it, this is going to be a great training wheels option. And I, I like to say training wheels because it gives us the path to follow. So whether you use it in your other projects or you want to quilt along it, it's going to be a, a fun option. In fact, in the future, we'll have little training wheels packets where you can have a yard of the fabric and a yard of backing and just practice quilting that design. Now, that's just if you want it. There's also going to be, like I said, diagrams that you can trace out as well. So either way. Then there's going to be a couple other prints, a couple more pink prints, and then this gray stripe. And what's really fun about the stripe is that it's kind of blurry. It's, it's like ombre-ish, and it's going to make a really cool binding as well if you, if you get to that point. So those are the coordinating prints that go with the collection. I've also compiled some coordinating solids. And again, this is just if you want to customize your panel or if you're just, you know, needing some pink and navy and and tealish fabric, it's gonna be a great option. And you can find that in the link in the description box below. Or you can always go to fmqchallenge.com and that will take you to all the previous challenges and you can find those there. Okay, so that is the flora and foliage, you know, uh, quilting along. Um, it's been a lot of fun putting it together and I cannot wait to go on this, you know, six week journey with you and to work through the designs. But first, let's talk about some frequently asked questions. So these are questions that come up a lot I just want to address them real quick. Do you have to pay to participate in the challenge? No. The videos are on my YouTube channel. There's no cost to participate. My idea, my whole plan is to make it so easy to participate that people will try it. Learning how to free motion quilt is hard enough without making it difficult to participate, right? So you don't have to pay. There's no cost. You don't have to have the panel. The quilting diagrams, the links to all that are in the videos. So definitely no reason to not try. Um, you don't have to quilt along with me right now. I, I know I've already said that, but I just want to reiterate it. You don't have to do this video right this second, but if you want some accountability, if you want to do it, you know, quilt along with some other friends, then it's a great time to, to participate. But I understand we're heading into a busy month with Mother's Day and all that stuff coming up. So if you can't, you just get it when you can. There's no, no pressure, no, um, no shaming for not getting it done. Where do I find the quilting diagrams for each lesson? This comes up all the time. So. The quilting diagrams are in the video, so when you watch the video, there's a description box. If you're not sure where it is, there's a little arrow that says see more, and you click it, and then it kind of expands under the video, and it has all the information. There'll be a link to it there. You can also find them on the website, so fmqchallenge.com. Under each challenge, I update the videos and the handouts and all that, 
And also signing up for my email newsletter will help as well because then you'll get them emailed to you directly. So lots of different options for you to find them. Definitely a resource I hope you take advantage of. Um, really, I've been doing that the last five or six challenges once people started asking for that. So it takes a while to put together. So I hope that you'll at least take advantage of it. Next question, will I demonstrate the designs on a sewing machine? Yes, so I demonstrate the designs on a sewing machine and a long arm. So the idea is you can kind of watch how it comes together on the machine that you're working with. But the main idea is that you know how it goes together. 80% of quilting is just knowing where you're going. But I will, I will demonstrate it on a sewing machine and a long arm. And then lastly, I'll get it all the time, where can I find the videos for the free motion challenge? You can find them on my website, which I've already said, quiltingismytherapy.com, or go to FMQ, like free motion quilting challenge.com, and you can find all the previous challenges. You can also go to YouTube and you can find them there. So each challenge is its own little playlist and you can check that out and go through a past challenge or keep up to date with this one. So hopefully um, those, free motion, those frequently asked questions will help give you an idea of what's going on. Of course, if you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments or you can um, definitely check out the website, ask any questions that you have. On a separate note, I know that not everybody is on Facebook, but if you're on Facebook, we have a free motion challenge quilting along Facebook group. It's a great place to post pictures of what you're working on, to encourage each other. I try to get on there every once in a while during a challenge, um, so, but it's a great place to kind of cheer each other on. So hopefully you'll check that out as well. So there you have it, <laughs> the, the uh, flora and foliage free motion challenge quilting along. Again, it's totally different than what I've done in the past. Pinks aren't usually my color, but again, I wanted something bright and floral and something pretty um, for the spring coming up. So looking forward to that. Okay, a couple questions that came up. So let's talk about questions and I'll tell you about the next couple live chats. Um, Patricia said, does the backing seem to shift around when I'm using batting with one side of fusible? So I like Quilter's Dream Fusion Batting. It has one side that's fusible and one side that isn't. And that usually brings up you know, some questions, right? So which side? Which side do I fuse it to? I always put the fusible side up so that it's sticking to the top and then the, just kind of sticks to the back with kind of like static electricity or however that works. I don't have trouble with it shifting. I don't get a lot of um, tucks in the back or I'll say ruching, right? Textured quilting. And I'll tell you why I think that is. When I'm quilting, ho hopefully this will make sense, I'm not twisting the quilt a lot. So I think when you're twisting and twisting and moving around a lot, that's when you're gonna get those, those tucks, which is not a bad thing, right? It's fine. But when I'm quilting, so let's use my little hand motion. If I'm quilting swirls, I'm keeping my hands in the same position, like they're still pointing, but I'm, I'm moving the quilt in the direction, I'm just not turning it like this. Now, that's not to say I don't turn the quilt. I do turn the quilt. I'll lift up my foot and I'll reposition it. But I think when we're wrestling it back and forth, and that's when it happens. But again, don't worry about it. You can only worry about one side of the quilt. Let's worry about the front because that's usually the, the most important side. So just take that for what it is. Um, on the same note about batting, Denise asked, what loft of Quilter's Dream do I use? So if I'm um, quilting on my long arm, I'll use Quilter's Dream Poly. If I'm on my sewing machine, I like to use the fus fusible because it helps baste it together. I like, so there's those types, but there's also lofts, and that's just like the thickness of the batting, different lofts. And so I go for the medium, the middle. So the poly select, um, I, think the, I think it's the same with fusion, fusion uh, fusible select, but select just means the loft, that's the middle loft. So Quilter's Dream poly batting in the select loft. But there really isn't a whole bunch of variation between the, the least and the most. And the best thing I could say is maybe just try a couple different lofts and see what works for you. It's totally up to you. But then she said, well, what one do I use if I'm doing one batting? And which one do I use if I'm doing two battings? So sometimes I like to do double battings, double batting on a quilt, especially if it's for like Tula Pink. She loves that. It just gives the quilt a much more uh, defined look. It's a lot heavier. I don't do a lot of double batting on my sewing machine. Since I have a long arm, I don't want to wrestle that. So on my long arm, if I'm doing one layer of batting, I do Quilter's Dream Poly Select. If I'm doing two battings, I do two layers of Quilter's Dream Poly Select. So same batting, just I layer on top of each other. So why is that? Why don't I try different? Because I know some people do cotton and poly and different things. I only have room at home for one roll of batting, and so I just have the Quilter's Dream Poly Select, and that's just what I use. So I don't know if that's the best answer, but that's what I do, and it, it works okay for me. So hopefully that makes sense. I know there's a lot of like questions when it comes to batting. As long as it's a quality batting, that's the only thing that matters. 
try out some different types, different lots. You'll find what you like really quickly. And then if you're like me, you'll stick with it and not ever deviate from that even 10 years down the road. So take that for what it is. Uh, Laura had a great question too. She said, why does cotton thread seem to break more when she's machine quilting? So I asked, I don't think I paid attention to the answer. Um, it depends on a couple of things. So cotton is a strong fiber, especially when it's quality cotton. So you have to use quality cotton machine quilting thread. If you're using something that's not quality or is not made for machine quilting thread, you're gonna see a lot more breakage with cotton because the, the plies that make up that thread are shorter and not as long. The longer the plies, the more um, strength it's gonna have. But since it is kind of plied together, it can have some weaknesses and break, especially if you're newer at machine quilting, you're not moving smoothly. So first I would say try quality um, thread, make sure it's quality. I love Aurifil cotton, that's my favorite, but as long as it's quality thread, there's a lot of quality cotton machine quilting threads, make sure you're using the right size needle for it. So here's where it gets tricky. <laughs> you could have a 50 weight cotton that's actually thicker than a 50 weight poly because of the strands, especially if it's a three ply um, cotton. I won't get into all the details. You can watch the thread, the live chat about threads because I can just geek out about threads all day. But even though it's 50 weight, the cotton might be a little thicker. So maybe going up to a bigger needle, the next size up might be a little advantageous. And then again, just moving smoothly and getting comfortable with it um, is the best thing you can do. So hopefully that helps. I know that it's frustrating when you finally decide that you're gonna start quilting and then thread breaks, it's like, oh, I'm gonna go and then I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna go. But just know it'll get better and easier with time. Okay, so let's talk about live chats and then I'm gonna peek on over and see if there's um, any questions I can add, add, ugh, answer pretty quick. Okay, um, next chats. So live chats do every Thursday, unless I don't, unless I'm out of town. So the next live chat will be this Thursday. And I'm gonna talk about my favorite machine quilting notions or supplies. So kind of the supply list for the challenge. What do I use and why do I like it? And you know, I'm gonna tell you, it just depends on what you like, but sometimes people wanna see what I, what I like to use. And then the next one I'm gonna talk about next Thursday how to improve your machine quilting. And this isn't gonna be stuff like um, practice. It's gonna be talking about what's your posture? How are you moving along? Where's your control at? So a little bit more of the, the granular bits of it, but hopefully those two things, if you're gonna participate in the challenge, we'll get you right into it. And then we'll go right into the challenge and we'll start that. Now, for those of you that join the live chats, cause you like all things quilting, I do have to say the next you know, eight weeks are gonna be all about machine quilting. So even if you don't love to machine quilt, I hope you'll join in and um, ask, ask any questions you have. I'm glad to answer them and just you know, have a fun time talking about quilting. So that is what's going on here. Now I will say every week I do a weekly giveaway and this week it's going to be a flora and foliage panel. So to enter the giveaway, you're just gonna click the link in the description box. To, so it'll say enter here, click there, and I'll announce the winner on Thursday. So. Your chances are better at winning because I'm sure less people will have time to enter in just those uh, few days. So definitely do that and one lucky winner will win it and I will announce the winner on Thursday. Um, so let's see, uh, Kat said, should I wash the panel, pre-wash the panel since there's so much reds, afraid to distort the design? Great question. I haven't washed it yet. I will say I've not had any trouble with that, but I haven't had so much red on the quilt. So I will do that. I'll wash it and we'll see what happens and I'll, I'll give you an update on Thursday. I will say in general though, in general, I don't like to pre-wash before I start piecing or quilting. And really the reason is pretty lame. I'm just lazy. I don't wanna have to wash it and then iron it. I just wanna get right to it. So um, usually I don't, and I wouldn't suggest it in this instance, but I'll let you know on Thursday if anything's different. So great, great question. Um, Shannon said, what size needle do you recommend, recommend for the glide thread that is in the quilting along supply list? So I like titanium top stitch needles and I'll include all this. I meant to have time to add all the supplies, suggested supplies, but I'll have that by Thursday. Um, but I like the titanium um, top stitch needles by Superior. And so I would either use an 80 or a 90 needle, 80, 12, 90, 14, that might be backwards, but one of those will work perfect. I think 80 is the specific one. And Jennifer says, love giveaways. Yeah, all quilters love giveaways. It doesn't matter if they're giving away a fat quarter, I want to win it, right? So uh, a lot of fun. Uh, Idri said, will this be machine brand specific? No, it won't be machine brand specific. There's too many uh, different types of brands out there. I'm just gonna say this is how you do it on a sewing machine and this is 
how you do it on a long arm. And for the most part, again, it's gonna be very similar. There are a couple of things I'll talk about, like for instance, wood grain. If I'm quilting on a long arm, I'm gonna be quilting horizontal. But on a sewing machine, I prefer to work vertically. So that's the difference there, depending on the machine. But when we get to leafy meander, there's really not gonna be much difference depending on the machine you're on. So I will definitely give pointers. Um, I'll show a little bit of both, but uh, just know that it really doesn't matter what machine you're using as long as you know how the design goes together. Um, Beverly says, I usually starch my quilt fabric, including panels instead of washing. Sure, yeah, that'd be great. It'd be nice and stiff and, or nice and smooth. Definitely okay with that. Oh, Mert, you're such a positive influence on my free motion quilting journey. Thank you. I'll be following this challenge too. It looks so interesting. Could you just tell my children that, that I'm encouraging and, and positive influence? You know, after last week, we went on family vacation. I think they were tired of me by the time in the end. I don't know why, but they were. So I'm glad um, that so many people want to learn how to free motion quilt, and I'm glad that I can be encouraging. Um, real quick before I land this plane, when I started teaching free motion quilting, gosh, 10 years ago or whatever, I, that's the first time I realized that people didn't love it as much as I did. And I would be in this class and I felt like my students were like acting like it was punishment. You know, like, oh, I finished the quilt, now I have to be in this class and learn how to quilt. And that's not it at all. But I also found that, and I guess I knew this, but I reiterated for me that we're so hard on ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves, especially when it comes to something like this, right? Something that is a creative skill that you just have to practice and get the hang of. I mean, people would be so down on themselves and I'm like, you gotta stop saying that. You know, this is great. You're doing your best quilting now. Um, and, and as silly as it sounds, I truly believe all of it. I'm always a glass half full. And I think if you really want to learn how machine quilt, it's not that hard. It just takes practice. But I hopefully will give you some tips along the way that makes it a little bit easier. So um, a finished quilt is always better than a perfect quilt top. So anyway, I'm excited to begin this challenge with you to kind of go along this journey with this one. And I will be back on Thursday, quick, uh, quick few day break, and then we'll talk about some of my favorite supplies. In the meantime, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, and or you can join the live chat early, and we can answer, you can ask them there, and I like to answer them. If you're not sure about the future live chats, you're not sure when they're coming up, just check out my YouTube page on my YouTube channel. Uh, the very first row of videos are upcoming live chats. So you can click on them and set a reminder so that you won't miss it. But if you miss it, no worries, it will be on my YouTube channel afterwards. And if you like the challenge or any of the videos or any of the content I put out, I hope that you will give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps more quilters find it as well. So thanks everybody for joining me. I'm really excited about this. I think you're gonna love it too. And I can't wait to see you on Thursday. Until then, happy quilting.